I got a recipe, holler me I know the secrets of making a dream come true, no apology Stand tall like a prodigy Sincere honesty Channel my vision, aim for the moon and reach for the prophecy Hello everyone, welcome to the Brexit Leagues podcast, I'm Sungarai Tramba. Now, sorry we did not have an episode last week. Uh, we wanted to have Alfie on, but Alfie fell asleep, sadly. So, we can't get him on this week either, he's got rugby, so probably we'll have to wait a week or two, but let's see. Uh, but as usual, Ethan wasn't here last week, so he's back this week. And he's obviously joining me as usual, on the Brexit Leagues. Now, coming up, we talk about Arsenal's 3-2 win over Man United. We talk about Burnley as they keep, you know, they keep winning games, and so do Sheffield United. Also, we're going to talk about the FA Cup previews and maybe a couple of little championship predictions along the way as well. So, welcome along to the Brexit Leagues podcast with me, Sungrai Tramba. And let's get started straight away because I'm joined by Ethan Oliver, as I just mentioned in that intro. How have you found the weekend's games? Um, there were some really good games and some really frustrating games. I'm not going to name names, but because. But yeah, I think. My favourite game was actually Arsenal versus Man United. That was a very good game. Man. It was outstanding. I mean, I was off the edge of my seat for the whole 90 minutes. That's that's for sure. It yeah, was uh, yeah. a brilliant game. It was end-to-end. Yeah, it certainly certainly was. Don't get me wrong. To, probably two of the best English wingers on the display, Saka and Rashford. Indeed. I mean, there were, there were two good goals. I mean, Nketi's last-minute goal, even as a Unite fan, I thought that was a really good goal as well. You know, I mean, it was the second time in the week we conceded in the 90th minute, but uh, I think Arsenal were the better team, to be fair, but we play, I yeah. thought we, were, we actually played a good game. We actually gave them a game there. It wasn't all plain sailing easy for them. It was... um. It's like brought back what it, the Arsenal United game used to be. Like it used to like be a good game. Like yeah. it used to mean something. Now like that game actually was quite good again. Yeah, because in the nineties and the two thousands, it was Arsenal Man United for the Premier League. You know, there was no yeah. such thing as Chelsea, Manchester City, Liverpool. Well, I mean, well, Liverpool maybe in the mid two thousands, maybe, but you know, Chelsea, Manchester City. You know, there was none of that. You know, there's no talk of... Well, I mean, there was actually talk of Newcastle back then. But, like, they never yeah. won the league. You know, but um, oh, it's good to see an old rivalry go back. It's weird, because this section's going to be obviously about probably half an hour long. <laughs> but, mm, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, that was, to me, the game of the weekend. It was just outstanding. But... Very good. Yeah. Arsenal. Six five shots from Arsenal though, and six from United. Yeah. In fact, like we had more than six, but yeah, Arsenal did fire a lot of shots at us, that's I for think sure. Arsenal managed to like break up the attack before you managed to get a shot away. Yeah, that's right. I mean Arsenal fifty points. Man City comes second, they're five points clear. So they're five points clear for City Arsenal. Having played the game less, I mean, you never, you never know. It could be there, yeah. Could be. I think it is there, yeah. Hopefully, think, it is. Think... Hopefully, it's been they've been a surprise package, really. Yeah, because I mean, from where they were when Arteta took over December twenty nineteen, one one draw against Bournemouth, I believe. I think it's just amazing to see how how brilliant they've been. You know. They've, they've been excellent. You know, they're a well drilled team. We saw a team that was, you know, three years into its rebuild. Whereas we saw a United team that was, what, uh, six, seven months into its rebuild, I think. Yeah. It was a very good game. I think that's by far the best game this season so far. I think 
Nketiah got man of the match, didn't he? He did. I think he did, yeah. But yeah, he did. Yeah. Casemiro missing, I think, was a bit of a blow. I think that potentially Casemiro could have changed the game. Possibly. But also, I think Cross yeah. made his debut as well. He did. Uh, the £27 million signing, of course. But yeah, Arsenal's next game... Possible. Yeah, but Arsenal's next game is against Everton. And, I mean... They've just touched Lampard, yeah. haven't they? They have indeed. They have indeed. And the same Biel- <laughs> Bielsa or Sean Dyche for the job. Get Dyche in. Please. I, I'd, rather, I'd rather him over Bielsa. Just... I want to see him in the job again because it seems like when Southampton had the opportunity to change manager, they went against him and so did Bournemouth. I think so it's got to be Everton. Southampton made a risky call, but it could pull off because if they go down, then they've got someone that knows the league quite well. And then I think Everton needs to do the same by getting Sean Dyche in. Yeah, I mean, Everton, I told you, they've got the players for that, for Dyche more than um, uh, Bielsa. <laughs> They got the lump up front with Calvert Lewin. That's right. That's indeed right. They got a lump in midfield in Anana. Yep. They got a lump at the back in Yuri Mina. Mm, of course. And then Pickford who can just smack it up or something. Well, it's gonna be an interesting it's gonna be an, I don't know why my brother went past. But yeah, it's gonna be a really interesting um Season ahead for both these teams. They're but, underperforming yeah. very well. Of underperforming course. quite a bit, Everton. Yeah, uh, we'll go through predictions shortly, but let's have a look at, obviously, another... There was another big match on. Um, before we move on to, obviously, predictions and stuff. Uh, Liverpool against Chelsea. Uh, it was goalless, and they're both in ninth and 10th in the Premier League table. But yeah. do you think... Do you think Chelsea are moving in the right direction now? Um, I wouldn't say so. Right. Like, I think the right direction would have been picking up three points there because Liverpool aren't exactly good at the moment, are they? No, they're not quite think, at it. Obviously... That I think they changed the system, didn't they? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Kula Bali's fallen out of favour now. Um. And they've brought in the new centre back Bagley Ashley. This could be a good sign for the future. It could um, be. Also, they had um a young young player on the team, didn't they? Um. Chelsea, uh, Lewis Hall. Oh, yeah, he's been making regular starts on the Potter, yeah. Yeah, 18. Mm-hmm. Um, five appearances this season. So, um, they're not obviously Liverpool. I don't know what's gone on. It's I think confusing to me. I always think about it and think that Liverpool team... It's had its cycle of five years because this was being built, I think, since like 2017, 18 or something like that. And I think yeah. that Liverpool team had that eight, that extraordinary 18, 19 season. And obviously they won the league the season after in 19, 20. Yeah. And obviously 2020, 2021, they had a lot of injuries. Uh, they snuck in on the final day into the top four. And then last year they pushed City all the way again. But this year, yeah. obviously, they're well off it. And they're obviously, they're 21 points behind Arsenal. Of course, they're not going to win the league yeah, this time. I yeah. think what they're missing is every summer, you see them signing a big attacker or someone in defence. Yeah. They have not turned their attention to the midfield. Like, yes, they loaned in Arthur, but that's, that's about it. They mm. need to sign... Two players minimum for the midfield because James Milner 
it's still in there sometimes. It's 38. Mike Keita, yeah. he's like in and around there, which he's not fit enough. He's always injured. Um, Jordan Henderson probably getting on a bit. If he didn't, if he wasn't as good a leader as he was, as he is, yeah, I don't think he'd be at Liverpool. He'd be at a low Premier League team because his footballing ability isn't actually that great. Mm. It's just his leadership qualities. And obviously, they've got Curtis Jones coming out. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I'd say keep him on the bench for a bit. Thiago as well, good midfielder. And then Fabinho, he's getting on as well. They need a new defensive mid and a new centre mid, I think. Mm. Certainly, because I look at some of the other like big six sides. Sometimes people say Liverpool's midfield might be the weakest. You know, if I you, think it yeah. is. I mean, sometimes I, I think, think to- I think Tottenham sometimes or Chelsea. We have to put I those think... two. Before Casemiro came in, I would have said Man United. Certainly, certainly, definitely. But the midfield now, so it's gone from Fred McTominay and Pogba. To Bruno, uh, Smero, Alexson, and Casemiro. And Casemiro. Yeah, it's a massive upgrade. That certainly, certainly, I think so. It's a massive upgrade. I think we've got probably one of the stronger ones now, and obviously the Gunners as well. We can't I forget the Arsenal midfield, though. It's like if you look at defensively, it's not actually as good as you may think it is. Because mm. like the Granite Shaker and Tom's party, they're not exactly world class. Yeah. They're good players. Like Party's really good in his day. But they need a really good player in there. They need a Kante or someone, someone that ability, not Kante himself. Yeah. Mm, of course. Of course. But anyway. We better get on with it now. That's enough about Liverpool, Chelsea, Man U, Arsenal. That that used to be the original Big Four. It reminded me. It was around this time, 16 years ago. So what was it? 2007, something like that. Um, those four met at the exact grounds. Liverpool beat Chelsea on that day 2-0. Arsenal scored a 90th minute winner that day. Kirsten yeah. Thierry Henry. So yeah, that that was an interesting fact. It used to be part of what was Sky Sports Grand Slam weekend before the Manchester yeah. City and Tottenham Hotspur came to disrupt the party. Welcome back to the Brexit Leagues podcast. And before the break, we were talking about the Premier League's games at the weekend and I almost forgot to say about Everton's board sack that board because those Everton fans do not deserve this um enough about Everton let's talk about the championship now and let's start with Friday night's game at Turf Moor between Burnley and West Brom two sides fighting out for promotion West Brom probably looking at the playoffs now after that disastrous start under Brucey Boy uh, and Burnley obviously are looking to win the championship title and they look almost destined for the Premier League next season. It was Scott Twine's late goal that won it for the Clarets. And I mean, what a goal that was, of course. Brilliant. Yeah, it was commentated a, by Daniel very Mack. good free kick, it was. Very, very good, good. Very good. I think, obviously, West Brom, the position they're in now, compared to the start of the season, I'd have taken that as the start of the season. Up till now, uh, three points off fourth, no, three points off second, third. Sorry, yeah, um, yeah, they'll be going, they'll be going for the playoffs. Burnley, but if they don't make it to the Premier League, then it's the ultimate bottle job. Hmm. Like, they're, they're clearly too good this season. They've assembled a very good squad, like the likes of Ian Maxim is a good pickup. Um, Cullen. You had him last season. Yeah, we did. Taya, um, Zerori, and obviously players like Brown who are stepping up. Uh, Jay Rodriguez, uh, Charlie Taylor now playing centre-back for them sometimes. Uh, yeah. 
look, Burnley have just been brilliant. You know, I think just I think they've been outstanding all season. They've been showing that they've been proving their credentials. That's that's the main thing. Burnley have just been, you know, excellent. And Sheffield United, they've been excellent. And then you've got the rest of the championship. They, it's like they those two are on a honeymoon. And yeah. all the all the other teams are like massively behind. It's like, it's like it reminds me of it reminds me of when I do coursework. <laughs> like, it's like yeah. Those two are running away with it. Exactly. But the rest of the league's all even. It's like you look all the way from third down to well, there's only five points between them. And then yeah. you look down to twenty first, there's only twelve points. So it's a very small gap. But the quality difference is big, though. Oh, certainly. Certainly. I mean, the quality of Burnley's players are really good. You know, they've gone into that European market, especially that Belgian market. They've recruited yeah. very well. You know, I think Manuel yeah, Benson was a good... Well. Mm. Benson was a good pickup. I think company... He's had a real impact on the whole team. You know, I think we yeah. all knew Burnley's Brexit FC... For many years, for over a decade, you know, even before Sean Dyche, when they had, um, I've forgotten his name. But yeah, you know, even before Sean Dyche, not, they had Eddie Howe before, yeah. They were Brexit then. But um, yeah, they used to, they were always Brexit, even when they first got to the Premier League in 2009. But um, it's just interesting to see now West Brom obviously catching up and stuff. It's going to be a, quite an interesting end to the season. And, it is. and Ethan, you have a stat for us, I believe, about Coventry City, which leads us on to our next point. So, with Kyle McPherson in the team, uh, one of our best centre-backs, uh, we haven't conceded a single set-piece, whereas I mean, with him in the team. Then, without him in the team, we've conceded five, and we've played more with him in the team than without. So we conceded more from set pieces in less game when he's not there. So he's very reliant at the back. Certainly, and I mean, it was a bit. I've got to be honest with you. It was a bit leaky on Saturday in that twelve thirty game between Coventry and Norwich. Coventry City 2, Norwich City 4 at the CBS Arena. You did go 3-0 down and obviously you were at that game. So yeah, that was... was interesting. Tell me about I... it. I was done after about 20 minutes. Um, on, to be fair, they did. we did respond well um, originally, but it's, it's one of them, I thought. We were going to get absolutely destroyed after the third goal went in. But then, like, we seemed to, you know, obviously the crowd was booing. But then the players seemed to, like, respond to that quite well. Obviously, mm. bring it back to 3 2, like, six minutes later. Uh, Gives you hope. Yeah. And then, second half, came back out. It was, it was poor. Poor. Um, I mean, yeah, so I think it's five games or something like that without a win. It's been a bit of a struggle post-World Cup, hasn't it? Yeah, we've won one game since after the World Cup. And that was to the Albion, of course. West Brom. Yeah. I mean, looking at it now, you're seven points off the playoff places. Game in yeah. hand, though. And with the game in hand, so that could be brought down to four should you win the game in hand against Huddersfield. Which uh, is on Saturday. Which is on Saturday, because you're out of the FA Cup as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, hopefully the new owner invests more into the club. I mean, yeah, hope so. hope hopefully, because so. it's been disastrously run for a very long period of time. Yeah, as it has. It's been... I liked, I think we've got no more debt left, because the new owner wiped out all the debts. He cleared it, yeah. 
he yeah. seems to want to get involved. He's like got a hands hands on role in the club. Mm. Um, just hope he brings goodness to the club. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it's going to be an interesting though end to the season because Watford, Blackburn, Norwich, Middlesbrough, Luton, Millwall, Sunderland, West Brom, Preston, Swansea, QPR, and possibly Reading, and maybe Coventry all have a chance of making it. You know, there's no still... We can play like we did on Saturday. Mm. You know, but um, how many... So we've got 18 games to go, most of us. Coventry have got 19. So it's, it's going to be an interesting final part of the season. Um, so, yeah, that should be really interesting. Um yeah. We would talk about the Carabao Cup, but obviously there's no, not really a point, is there? Because, I mean, it'll be out before the Nottingham Forest Man United game. There's Southampton Newcastle, so, so yeah. But uh, let can I just quickly pause it? I just need to quickly um, my mum's yeah. being <laughs> the pain in the ass. Yeah. That was a bit of a cock up there. But yeah, I mean, just looking at that championship table, it looks really tight at the bottom. You know, I think, I feel like Rotherham could still go down, but Mick McCarthy's just been appointed the Blackpool boss. Hopefully, yeah. he keeps them in the league. He's one of them, I think. He's one of them managers that seems to always find a way to just drag a team away from relegation every year. Yeah. So the championship's out of the dice. <laughs> I mean, he won promotions with Sunderland and Wolves in the Championship, two thousand and five and two thousand and nine. I mean, Cardiff, his last job didn't really. It started well, but didn't really work out for him. Yeah. I think because they lost five nil to like Wednesday or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, but um, nah. Listen, hopefully, hopefully he gets them out of trouble. Uh, let's look at some of the other games now before, obviously, we get on to League One. Um, Watford were held and so were QPR. Um, Watford obviously can't get automatic promotion. I don't think they will. But mm-hmm. QPR, do you think it's... Because Swansea scored late, do you think it might dent their playoff chances? Um, I don't know. It's really tight. Yeah, they are only four points out still. Um, I don't think I don't know. They they signed obviously Jamal Lowe. Yeah, who could fire them up there as he scored against one of the I think debut game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Tough one to call. They have got some quality in there. Obviously, they got Willock, got Dicky, yeah, uh, Laird, a chair. And Lyndon Dykes. Dykes, yeah, he's one of them. Doesn't score much, but he does so much more. He possesses so um, much quality, yeah. Yeah. If he scored more, he'd probably be Premier League, I reckon. Because his all-round game is quite good. Of course. I mean, I mean, QPR did start well. And then, obviously, Mick Beale left. He goes he goes back to Rangers, back to Glasgow. Uh, yeah. He's had an impact up there. He hasn't lost the game yet. But, um, I mean, they appoint Critchley, the, obviously the ex-Blackpool boss. He, they've started all right with him. I mean, they've thrown away 1-0 leads quite late on, just like United. Mm. But, you know, they've they've thrown away late goals against, obviously, Sheffield United recently. And, obviously, in that recent game against Swansea. Swansea, obviously, like you'd expect... They had more of the ball, but QPR fired more shots at them, it seemed. But, um, yeah, QPR and Swansea still in that playoff playoff hunt, both in 12th and 13th, respectively. Uh, Let's move down and let's have a look at Bristol City and Blackburn Rovers, because finally, at the 28th time of asking, Blackburn Rovers have finally drawn a game. 1-1. Yeah, I mean... doesn't really look an entertaining game like obviously usually Blackburn they're usually known for being really attacking but 
they didn't really get that much away of shots, I suppose, because Bristol don't really concede much um, anymore. Part of the season, they were leaky, but scoring loads. Now they're conceding less, but scoring less. Um, okay, Blackburn got a red card. That probably stopped them attacking later on. Um, yeah. Obviously, Broughton Diaz is most likely off to, I think, is it Villarreal? Uh, yeah, the reports think Villarreal, yeah, that's it. Yeah. In the league. So Villarreal on the free in the summer. So missing out on quite a bit of money. Um, they've still got Dak in there, who's not on his day a quality player he is. Um, yeah. Obviously, I don't think Dom Hyam played for them, did he? I think he's away. I don't know. He was in their squad. Um, Maybe injury. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. And obviously, Bristol, uh, Semenyo, he's a quality player. So is Scott. Um, yeah. Semenyo scoring the equaliser. Mm. I mean, Bristol City are just, they've been in the championship since 2015 16. So you're talking about when Burnley were last there. Um, but, I mean, you see, Bristol, I think Bristol City, Preston, Birmingham, Reading, those four teams have been in that division quite a quite a while. Quite a while. Yeah. And maybe you could say Millwall now as well. But they've been in that division quite a long time indeed. Yeah. You know, and they just, they never, there were some times under Lee Johnson that the Robins always used to have that playoff push. Yeah, I think in eighteen nineteen they really went for it, but yeah. um, they haven't really had sort of like a promotion push since then because they've been sort of lower mid table and you know the club's ambitious; they want to get to the Premier League, but yeah, it's so congested at the minute. It's going to be quite difficult for a team like that I think to get to the Premier League. If all could they, if they find a way to keep scoring and keep goals out, yes. They do have quality to get to the playoffs, obviously with Semenyo, Naismith, Scott. So, yeah. Of course. Um, I think all oh, teams yeah. have two or three players that are good enough to carry them up. But it's like whether they have more. So, obviously, Kof, we've got Payne, Yokareza Hare, uh, Bristol, obviously, Semenyo, Scott, and Naismith. Um, mm. West Brom have got um Thomas Asante. Thomas Asante, yeah. DK and DK and um because Lou. Yeah. Um uh, but yeah they've all most of the teams have got like three, four players that are like really up there. Which is why I think it's really even. Whereas Burnley and Sheffield United are a team of quality players. So yeah, they didn't really push. So like, even Watford, they're not really a team of quality players. Cause got Joao Pedro, Ismail Assar, and Chowdhury. Like, could potentially put a case in for Keenan Davies, but. Hmm. Mm. So yeah, I mean, there are some good, there are some strong championship teams there. Watford have got the most expensive one, it seems. Uh. Wigan obviously have the cheapest lineup, but um, talking of Wigan Athletic, uh, it's Colo Torre's ninth game in charge. It was another defeat to Luton. They'd lost them in the FA Cup earlier in the week at the DW. They lost them at the DW again. Rob Edwards certainly having a real impact on that team. Wigan nil, Luton Town two. Colo Torre's had nine games, zero wins, three defeat, three draws, and six losses. He hasn't really had the start that he wanted at Wigan, and it's, I think I think they're going to go down because they they started all right to be fair, but I think I think they're going to go down. What do you think? It's it's predictable really. Um, I should have gone for someone who's more experienced rather than a name. Yeah. It's, obviously, they did control the ball. They only registered one shot on target all game. Sounds like a typical cough performance, really. <laughs> um, especially against Luton. 
Yeah. Uh, obviously, Luton know how to like get make it break their way through games. They don't need to control the ball. They just need to put their foot in and just get the opportunities. And they don't they do score. Um, I believe Adebayo scored. Is that his first goal of the season? Maybe I'm not sure. I'm, I'm he's not, not sure. scored many this season, has he? No. Been very very anonymous on the goal scoring charts. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously Harry Cornick is always lively, just running around a lot. He scored as well. That's um, about to score five, by the way. Has he? Yeah. Yeah, he's not as prolific as he was last season. To be fair. Yeah, of course. Um. Obviously, Wigan signing uh Coker at centre back. Experience. Decent, decent experienced player. Um. They have got some good players, but I don't know. Can't, I think... can't see them sitting up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we always think Wigan Athletic was a team that used to defy the odds when it got to the Premier League uh, yeah. 18 years ago. I think they're the worst team I've seen at, in the Championship. Uh, at the Cough, at, at home when watching Cough so far this season. They've been the worst team. But I think they've got. You've also got to bear in mind, they've got the oldest squad in the league. They do. They do. Yeah, I think they they've got the in terms of average ages. I think they've got the the oldest one. But yeah. anyway, let's move on to the next couple of games because we had Cardiff nil, Millwall one, Stoke four, Reading nil. Stoke needed that victory. Uh, they are still though nine points off the playoff places. 18 games still to go. But Stoke needed that win, didn't they? Yeah. To be fair, what a win, though. 4-0. I mean, no one saw it coming. Like, Dwight Gale has not been the Dwight Gale of old, where, like, constantly scoring. He's been one of the most wasteful players in the league, I think. Yeah. Obviously, Reading controlled the ball more. But Stoke just ruthless in front of the goal. Like they had seven shots on target, scored four. Like yeah, it's yeah, they're just really good. Um, Tyrese Campbell scoring again. Uh, Brown scoring, Gale scoring. All three of them have been quite wasteful this season. They are just seem to have finally been able to find the back of the net. So hopefully they keep it up. Oh yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. I mean, Stoke needed that win. You know, it's not been plain sailing good for the, or good for them in the last few years, anyway. No. So yeah, but um, we've got two more games to look at before we head on to League One and League Two after the break. Um, Birmingham won Preston two. Now, Birmingham City fans voiced their concern obviously over the club's ownership because it's been going on for a while, you know, there's been like eight managers, so many like relegation scraps the club has been involved in. I think they're going to be embroiled into another one this season. It's five defeats on the bounce for Eustace. He's done all right, to be fair. You know, yeah, Birmingham, this season off well. yeah, Birmingham always find a way, but it's just, they've just lost their way a bit and, you know, fans have been, voicing their concerns and you have to feel for those Birmingham fans because they've been going through this a long time, you know. There was a takeover bid that was failed, I think, for the club. And yeah, I think Jamie yeah, Carragher mentioned it on Monday Night Football. I think that Everton the worst run club in the country. I think <clears throat> Birmingham City have to be up in that like top four or five. I don't I wouldn't say Everton are the worst run club in England but... I think, we, I, think we are. I think we are. I think we are. Who? Who? Oh. No, United. United are not the worst one. Club. Yeah. You got money, mate. If you get money to spend, you're not a badly run club. I think there are worse clubs to run. Like, look at Macclesfield. Oh, certainly, club. certainly. Um, you got to look down lower for like worse run clubs. And Scunthorpe, um, Scunthorpe and Yeovil. Uh, Bolton a while ago, they were quite badly run. 
they've improved now massively. Yeah. Like, if, if you support, like, you can't say Everton are the worst. Like, if you're an Everton fan, you're lucky because we've seen Premier League in it. So. I think Cardiff. Cardiff have been voicing their concerns over the ownership because. Yeah, Charlton Athletic. Yeah. Oh, that yes, that's that's been the one that's gone on for a while actually. Yeah, with that club, we could we could sit here and name every single one, but yeah, I mean, sometimes the way these clubs mismanage it, we're gonna we're gonna do a section actually before the end about best and worst run clubs. So please stay until the end for that. Um, let's. Let's talk about um the next game. Though. It's the final one in the championship this weekend. Sunderland to Middlesbrough nil. Bragging rights in the northeast to Sunderland. What what do you think about that? I think Sunderland with Ross Stewart is they are a good team, but take him out, and they aren't really all that. I think. They need to increase the overall ability of the team before thinking about genuine promotion push. Because Stuart can't do it all himself, as we saw when he was injured. Like They sort of crumbled a bit, didn't they? Um, yeah. And then Middlesbrough. I don't know. I just... They just should be doing better. I don't think... There'll be games that they, I think they should be like even more up there than they are. They should be battling with Sheffield United and Burnley, I think. But yeah, currently sat six. Um, yeah, I mean, Middlesbrough are still sixth in the championship. They are. They are. Um, I think they should yeah. be battling for higher. Yeah, because they're still sixth in the league. So you know they're still they're doing well. I think they're on doing well. Yeah, they're on track. They've got they've got some good players in there. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be they worried shouldn't be too like, much. You think? Yeah, they should. They should be like trying to battle it out to finish second or something, but not scraping playoffs. I'd say. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting, but. You know, their next game anyway is against... It's a difficult one, actually, for the Borough. It's at home against Watford. So that should be interesting. And join me. Join us too after the break when we'll be discussing League One, League Two, and we'll be talking about the best and worst run clubs in English football. That is after the break. Bang. Welcome back to the Brexit Leagues and the final part of the Brexit Leagues, actually, uh, where we go through Skybet Leagues 1 and League 2. So Leagues 1 and 2 it is then. I mean, a few games were called off, let's not forget, but there will be some games happening in midweek. We'll talk about them maybe next week if I try not to forget. But let's have a look at the weekend games actually here. And Oxford United 2, Ipswich Town 1. Ipswich lose more ground on Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth. What do you, what are your thoughts on that, Ethan? I think it's a good result for Oxford. Nice win over Ipswich. Um, I think Ipswich should be doing better. Should be more clinical in front of goal. Um, got a solid team. Shouldn't really be troubled there. Oxford, as I say, good result. They're about mid table. Um, potentially could battle for playoffs. Can't really see it though. Um, yeah. yeah. Overall, good for Oxford, bad for Ipswich. Yeah, I mean, obviously that game was played in fog over in Oxford down the road from here. But, um, I mean, as a result, Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth capitalised on that. 
Let's start with Sheffield Wednesday. 1-0 winners over Fleetwood. It was Johnson who scored. But um, what are your thoughts on that? I think Sheffield Wednesday constantly like getting closer and closer to the obviously championship now. Mm. Um, quick turnaround obviously after the relegation. Uh, not so long ago, I think two seasons ago, three seasons, two, three. No, yeah, two, um, two, two. Yeah. Um, obviously it took losing. All going right for them. Uh, Fleetwood. For them, it's not catastrophic losing, but they want to keep the points ticking over because they don't want to get into the relegation battle. Because there's four teams relegated from this league, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Scott Brown's done all right, in fact, in this first job in management. Ex-Celtic player, obviously. Celtic yeah. legend at the club. But um, I think he's done all right. Fleetwood, I think, I think they certainly will stay in the league. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but, they're not good enough. Yeah, I think there's there's no doubt. There's no doubt they'll stay in the league. Um, Let's talk about Plymouth Argyle, because... Obviously, they've got a game against Sheffield Wednesday next, which is a massive one, obviously, in the League One table. But Plymouth set themselves up nicely for that one uh, with a 4-2 victory over Cheltenham. What are your thoughts on that? I think it shows their attacking quality, scoring four goals. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter who it's against. Obviously, four players on the score sheet. Um including Cosgrove, who's on loan from Birmingham, who, while at Birmingham, he's done nothing. None of them have rated him. Um, but while he's been at Plymouth, he's, he's been all right. Been all right. Um, yeah. Obviously, Cheltenham, uh, I think, did they get promoted last year? Yeah, um, no, season before. Season before. Still relatively new to the league. Um, yeah, I think they're doing well. Four two to top of the table. It's not shameful, um, considering like eighteenth in the league. So. Yeah. But you know, you think about it. Plymouth Argyle are, are have been brilliant. They were brilliant last season. It was a shame how it obviously ended. But Plymouth Argyle, I think, they're going to answer the call, uh, this time round. Uh. There's another team that's been gaining a lot of momentum under Paul Warren, and I think we all know who that is. Uh, Derby oh, County. Derby uh, beat Bolton 2-1. Crucial game in the promotion went race, that one. That means Derby are now unbeaten in their last 18 uh, league ma- Well, their last 18 matches in all competitions. 2-1 victors over Bolton. What are your thoughts? And do you think they could possibly catch Sheffield Wednesday? Um, I don't know because looking at the forms, like Sheffield Wednesday won the last five. Um, obviously, points gap between them is uh 11. It's a yeah. big gap, it's a big gap. Derby got 20 games left, Sheffield Wednesday 19. It'll be a tough ask. I don't think it would happen, but obviously, a nice victory over Bolton, who are one place below them in the league. Uh, down in fifth. Um, Bolton last minute scored one, needed another one. Seemed a bit of a quiet affair, really, because not many shots shots on target as you see in League One, but mm. usually there's quite a few. But yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it now. Obviously, Derby have West Ham in the FA Cup on Monday next week. They've got Port Vale on. On Tuesday, the day we're recording this, but um, after that, they've got Morecambe and then a tough trip down to Buckinghamshire, uh, to Adams Park against Wickham. But they've got Lincoln, Charlton, Barnsley to come. Charlton, Barnsley could be tough ones potentially. Could be, they could be. Um, yeah, Barnsley, good side. Charlton as well, good side. Charlton's got ownership issues, isn't they? I think sort out the ownership and. They could be up there, really. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. It wasn't. It wasn't that long ago, though. They were in the, they were in the Premier League. 
yeah, it wasn't. So like, not in the Premier League, sorry, the Championship. Championship, yeah. Um, I think they did. They did almost make it up. Uh, not too long ago. Um, uh, one Conference League one, I think they were up there. Um, mm. I think what's really killed them off is um their ownership issues, really. So hope it sorts out from, so, and they can get back soon. Same with. It's not the same circumstance, but like Portsmouth, surprisingly, mm. they're usually up there. Um, hopefully, they can come up because not as in like Sam's been pick up again. So. Certainly, you know, I'm just that that promotion race. You know, I think Peterborough's still in it. You know, Darren Ferguson, <laughs> goodness Fourth gracious me! This it's like it's like marriage and divorce. You can't get rid of that one ex. That's what I always think about with Peterborough. I feel like they they can only choose from two managers. They can't appoint someone who maybe they haven't appointed before. They haven't done that for a while. Yeah. They always but, go back to Fergie, don't they? <laughs> they always go back to Darren Ferguson. That's right. But um, having a look at other games, uh, another, Portsmouth, uh, 2 X to City nil. John Moussinho left Oxford to become Portsmouth manager. It wasn't really a popular appointment, to be fair, because Portsmouth thought they were going to get someone experienced, like Wilder, like possibly Grant McCann. But he started with a 2 0 win over Gary Caldwell's Exeter City. Moves keeps Portsmouth in 15th. Exeter City are in 12th, albeit they've played three games more than Pompey. What your, what's your assessment on Portsmouth and the Moussinia? I think it's going to be the beginning of a turn up in form again, obviously. Yeah. They are one of those sides that I think usually challenge up there. I think he'll. I don't think he'll have time this season to take him back up. I think. No. I, don't think. Uh, I think I'll have to settle for about tenth, maybe this season. Um, but yeah, it's a good result. It's it first game in charge, I think, weren't it? So yeah. Can't really ask for more. Really, clean sheet win. Exactly. So. I mean. I mean, Pompey, it always happens. Uh, one of my mates, uh, I don't know if he'll be watching this, Freddie Line, he's a Pompey fan, and, you know, Portsmouth, they, they just always seem to start well. But then their yeah. promotion bid sort of, it falls away all the time. It, it, it always happens. It's happened over the last few seasons. That's why over a decade-long period, they've been stuck in that, well, in League One, obviously, they're in League Two for a bit. So, yeah, yeah. they... It is quite difficult for them to get out of this league. It's like they're sort of engraved. They're trapped in. They're trapped in this league. Yeah, but, that's like... yeah. I mean, looking at it, um, also there weren't there weren't many games that took place. There were some games that were called off. Obviously, Peterborough's match with Charlton, Lincoln, Burton, Morecambe, Port Vale. I think that was it. So only nine of the twelve games took place. So... Uh, let's let's have a look at one more. I think let's look down towards the bottom. Cambridge. Oh yeah, that was a five star performance from Steve Cottle's side. Let's talk about that actually. What what did you make of it? That was that's a quality result for Shrewsbury. Um obviously. Uh former Cov player John Shipley getting the score sheet. Um Kovlad Leahy scoring twice. Um another former Cov player, Pennington scoring as yeah. well. So one sec. Overall good performance by Shrewsbury, five one. Uh, against Cambridge side, which are sat where are they sat in the league? Sat in the bottom four, like very convincing. First, be currently mid table. They're not going to be up there. They're not going to be down there. But yeah, just some entertaining. Huh? In football. Yeah. Sorry about that. But I mean, Shrewsbury are. They're brilliant. That was a brilliant. Five star performance from them, and I mean, they're always one of them yeah. sides around the mid table that pulls something out the bag every now and then. I mean, I think I, I, don't, I don't know if I said it in the last episode, but what was it? Um, who the hell was it? Yeah, it was under Paul Hurst in the I think it was 17 18 season. They that they had that one chance, then they threw it away, which was annoying because I wanted. Them in the championship over Rotherham because there was someone different. Then the next season, Cough raided them. 
Exactly that. Uh, but let's have a look at one more League One match, actually. Uh, Forest Green against MK Dons. Forest Green took the lead, but MK Dons came from behind to win that one two one. What are your thoughts on that one? I think it's a bottom area of the table clash. Forest Green is not looking good for them at all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a dull game. Minimal shots. MK yeah. Dons scoring both shots on target. Forest Green scoring one out of two. Obviously, Forest Green throwing away a lead, and Moise is showing um, shades of player who used to be quite clinical, scoring two goals. Um, it's been a tough season for both of them. I don't think either are really that great. I think Forest Green's been a good story for them because it's a very small club, very small area. I think it's village. Um, Near Stroud. Yeah. MK Dons, it's... They've got awful fans, didn't they? <laughs> yes, certainly. Sorry, MK Dawn's fans, if you're listed. I think they need a. <laughs> then, if their fans need to start turning up, then potentially they could maybe see something from them. Yeah, MK Dawn's. They're, they're all right. You know, they're, they're... I've been to their ground before, went there last year. Uh, well, I was, it, there wasn't a game on, but I was at the club shop. I got something from there, but um, nah, MK Dons. It's it's the area it's in though. It's in a it's in a good area. Yeah, the area is really nice. I've it's been one there. of my favourite. What it's actually a really good area. I've been to a few times. Very nice ground as well. Mm, it's just they never fill it. Yeah, <laughs> nowhere near filling it. Yeah, I'm trying to have a. Oh, Sorry about that. But um let's move on to League Two. Um let's move on to the next one. Uh and it's a crucial game actually at the top of League Two. I might I don't know how, how I'm gonna edit that last bit out. I don't think I'll be able to. But um Steven is three late in Orient Nil. Steven is just game in hand got postponed because of the frozen pitch but they could have gone top with that if they'd won it but what do you think about Stevenage this season because I'm was i very surprised yeah same like usually they're a team in and around bottom area of the table isn't it like usually a team that are going to get relegated uh, been a very big surprise package this season beating of top of the table late in Orient um, obviously they went to the before the red card as well. So if it wasn't convincing before it is after that. Twenty shots and eight on target. To Leighton Orient's eight shots and none on target. It's not good enough from Leighton Orient, realistically. Mm. Um I feel for their fans that travel to the game. But it wasn't that long of a trip. <laughs> yeah, but still. Yeah. So go out lose three 0 and you're top of the league, have a red card. Yeah. No shots on target. Oh, yeah, of course. But no, I mean, they're still top of the league, but, you know, yeah. still, they've still got, a, they've still got a like, massive 15 point cushion. So it's, it'll, it'll be inevitable to see them bottle promotion. Hopefully, hopefully they don't bottle it. I think they, they definitely will get promoted. I think along with Steven. I mean, Northampton have been the ones struggling in the recent matches, but most of those games actually this weekend were. Called off. Five so, of them were called off, including Northampton's game against Bankfield. That's right. Yeah, that would have been the crucial one because that's a repeat repeat of the playoff semi-finals. Yeah, uh, that was last season, of course, and obviously Mansfield came out on top for that one. There'll be a few games later on, but uh, we'll have a look at two more games because these are the last two games before we head on to the final bit. Um, Hartlepool 2, Rochdale 0 and Colchester 0, Gillingham 2 two crucial games in the relegation battle right at the bottom of that division yeah what are your thoughts on uh, that? First, first of all, Hartlepool, Rochdale um, good result, 2-0 win um, obviously did Rochdale have two red cards? yeah 
And Crikey. I mean, the Fresh Jill. Prince of Wii games. Mm. I was Really? gonna, I was gonna say the Jills. Uh, Gillingham are now. I think they've obviously got new owners now. They needed that Yeah. after a look. I mean, fans weren't happy with the owner Paul Scally. You know, one of my mates is a Gillingham fan. One of the people I play with, and hopefully, Will's what listening to this. But um, that that nah, Gillingham are. They are, I think, getting a bit of momentum now. I think Yeah. Very they could clinical, kick off. they were. Very Two clinical. goals. Mm. And then minimal match up, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's Colchester side, which could be down there. Then obviously, Hartlepool beating Rochdale. Um, I think that took Hartlepool off the bottom of the league and put Rochdale down there, didn't it? It did, and Rochester has looked really gone well for them, you know, since the Bradford, the heroics at Valley Parade against Bradford a couple of weeks ago. But, um, I mean, it's going to be a huge fight to stay in the EFL. I think, I think Jill Gillingham will stay in that. They won't go down again. They will stay in the league, I guarantee. Because they're not bad defensively compared to the teams Yeah. they're, They're not. they're sandwiched between. They've got they've only scored eleven goals this season though. Two of which were against Colchester in twenty five Yeah. games. So Exactly. that's what's really let them down. They've only conceded twenty eight. Defence has been solid. I just not scored. Mm. But anyway, uh, next week we'll be back on predictions because there'll be more. There'll be more. There'll be more games next week because it's all the, about the FA Cup. Um, and we'll review that, of course, next week on here. Uh, now it's time to have a look. at the best and worst run clubs in English football for the final 10 minutes, maybe, of this podcast. Um, let's talk. Let's start with the worst run clubs. We mentioned, I think, Everton and I think I said Birmingham City is probably the Yeah, worst run. Charlton Athletic. Yeah. Um, previously, Derby and Cove, obviously both under new owners now. Yeah. Um, Portsmouth in the previous past as well. Bolton in the past. Bury. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, totally forgot about them. But yeah. Yeah, there's been, there's been many uh, clubs that have been running to the ground by their owners or close to, like. Scunthorpe. Yes, yeah, Scunthorpe. Um, Macclesfield. Um, just got to look really down towards the lower tiers. You'll see loads of it. We forget. We always forget. Older athletic is always Oldham, one. yeah. Yeah, there was just one game. I think it was a game against Salford or something like that. That I, I was seeing pictures. I think on Soccer Saturday, I remember seeing pictures last season of. <laughs> I think they were protesting against the owners, and then the game had to be abandoned, and they had to play the final few minutes without the fans in. But um, I mean. There are some badly run clubs in the Premier League. I say my own team because it's been awful. I mean, Tottenham fans yesterday after the Fulham game on the Monday Night Football were shouting, Daniel Levy, get out of our club. Mm. Yeah. Which wasn't, that was not pleasant, obviously, but I can understand why. I mean, I mean, you know, obviously the whole European Super League thing caused this. But they're criticizing him because he hasn't been he hasn't backed Conte, but Conte has spent I think in excess of two hundred million pounds in the what two windows he's had. Yeah, he's. I think he's backed him, but he's not bought the players that Conte wants. He's had to, Conte's had to settle for players that he didn't particularly want as his first choice because Levy's not giving him the money right away. I think he's really, he's really like bored a bit from that. Obviously, they're still fifth. They're still like up there. So Yeah. nothing really to complain about. But obviously, they could have done better if Levy took a less hands-on approach in transfers and gave Conte the money he wants for the players he wants. So... Yeah, because people said in the summer that Spurs won the transfer window. 
I think people, what happened was, I think people got too carried away. I always say that's the one team you never get, you should never ever get carried away with. Yeah, definitely not. Because if you Obviously. get carried away with Spurs, <laughs> I think you've got some sort of problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, I, don't, I don't think they're going to win a trophy for a while, are they? No. Um, obviously, sticking to the Premier League on the opposite side of the spectrum, you've got Brentford. I think they're a very well run football club they are. Oh, um, certainly. Um, if we look at the best run clubs, yeah, um, Brentford, um, Brighton, Brighton, Fulham, potentially. Yes, I mean, a few years ago, they were playing, <laughs> I described it as them playing football manager. <laughs> I yeah. think in the I think it was 2018-19, something like that. this season, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Chelsea if we, if we, is the most obvious one. Forest and Chelsea. Probably. Those moment, two. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, nah, I mean, Brighton and Brentford, it's the way they got to the Premier League is why they're the best run yeah. clubs in the league. You know, Brighton are... Look at where those both the teams are. They're like... 6th, 7th, 8th Premier League, uh, Brighton, Bull and Brentford. They're outstanding. They run quite well. Um, above Liverpool and Chelsea, of course. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even in the Championship, I think there's some good, well-run clubs there. I mean, Sheffield United's all obviously decently yeah. run. Burnley. Burnley's quite well run. I think uh, under the new owner, it is. I think old owner like got a bit edgy towards the end. Yeah. I mean, um, sometimes, sometimes Watford. I don't know. Oh, Watford's not Watford's not well run. That is not well run. It's decent. It's 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 poorly run because the owners they keep chopping and changing. I mean, they get the supply of players, don't they? I think it's more on the pitch where they struggle. Mm. Yeah, and like obviously they they sack managers, but they do invest. They <laughs> give them money. The club stable. So, yeah, you know, I mean, Middlesbrough, I mean, Middlesbrough. Oh, Gibbo's always Steve Gibson's always run that club well. Isn't he a fan of the club as well? So. Of course, he is. Uh, yeah. He used to attend matches at Ayrson Park, which was their old ground before they moved to the Riverside. Yeah, so, yeah, he's he's the owner as well. So yeah, he's he saw the club going to like. Well, it was. It's obviously we we obviously know it as the Europa League. Um, it's Champions, obviously is it the Champions Cup. No, no, UEFA Cup. Yeah, UEFA Cup. Um, yeah, yeah, but um, you know, there's some there's just some really good, good, well run clubs in the in the Premier League and the Championship. I mean. Yeah. I think Forest have been better run, to be fair. But we go back to the worst run clubs. I think Birmingham City, that one's been going on for a Birmingham very City, long yeah. time. That one's... It's strange, because um, the stadium's falling to pieces. Um, hmm. Obviously, the, own, the new, there was going to be a new owner coming in, pulled out. Uh, that was a bit of an odd one. It um, was strange. I've not really been able to spend loads of money. They've had to provide for themselves, really. Um, it's a shame because not long ago they were trying to get up there and be in and around trying to challenge for the playoffs. Now they're just trying to save themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's gone on for like most of the last decade. I think since like 2013, 2014, something like that. But, um, you know, like Birmingham have been trapped in that league since 2011. Which is oof, twelve years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, who else? Um, obviously, Sunderland weren't exactly very well run in the past, were they? No, no. That's why they had the double drop. Even Wolves. Yeah. Wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Who else? I think whole city have improved. Yeah. Luton have improved. Oh, Luton are definitely one of the best running in that league, actually. Yeah. I told you, sorry, Luton fans. Sorry, James O'Callaghan. 
Uh, I to- I totally forgot about Luton Town. Luton Town are a very, very well run club. I think the progress they've made on the pitch is is brilliant. Like a mini Burnley, like you know what Burnley used to be. Yes, of course, of course. I'm looking also like decent side to be fair. I think I think and if I look at League One now, if I'm looking at League One clubs, Wickham obviously always been a very well run club. I think Peterborough. Peterborough. Well, people well, some fans could argue. People say not not really. They they're okay, they're all right, they're in the middle. I'd say they're well run. Mm. Ipswich. Ipswich are yeah, they're much better run than before. That's for sure. Yeah. I think I think Exeter City are well run because they're owned by the yeah. supporters, let's not forget. Um obviously we mentioned Derby, Pompey and obviously, that. on the other side of the things we talked about Charlton as well yeah Charlton people say Thomas Sangar doesn't really he hasn't really put the money into the club yeah I mean a team that's punching with their weight quite a lot Forest Green oh yeah certainly because I think they're the lowest budget in that league they've got they've got they're a really small club mm, very like, small club it's a miracle yeah. they're like in like the fact they're really like by far the smallest in League One goes to show how small they are. Mm. It's like with Burton Albion. I know they're second bottom, but they were in the championship a few years ago. Yeah, they were, they were. Hosting Derby County in the rival in a little A38 rivalry. Still are this season. Mm. In but, League One. Yeah, I mean, oh, I totally forgot. I actually totally forgot Burton and Derby were in the same division. But, yeah. I mean... I look at certain teams, fans, you know, like Wickham fans are apps that are brilliant. When I was, obviously, I told you when I was at the game uh, about eight or nine weeks ago, yeah. it was, despite the defeat, you know, speaking to them, there was just saying how much they love the club, you know, the passion for it, you know. But um, like some of these teams, like Bristol Rovers have brilliant fans, that's for sure, you know. Yeah, I think... Um, Bristol, just in general, they have some good fans. Like Bristol City, have some good fans. Bristol Rovers have some good fans. I think Bristol Rovers is probably better than Bristol City, like quite a bit. Because I remember, like, whenever they used to come to uh, when it was a Rico, they used to bring about four thousand every time. Oh, um, they used to make a lot of noise. Um, Bristol City bring a decent amount. Don't make a lot of noise, but you could notice it there. So, mm. just a I, decent city. I love. I love um going to Bristol. I've been there once. It's a not not to the grounds, obviously, but I've been to the outskirts of it. But uh, you know, they're they're def- it's definitely a good area away from you know away from all of like London and all those congested clubs in like the north of England. You know, yeah. Bristol's just a mad place. Even oh, I've been to Home Park. I've seen Home Park. Um, I was there over in the summer at the start of the season, but um. You know, like Plymouth Argyle used to be poorly run like yeah, 10, maybe. 11 years ago. And now they've sort of, if you like, they've moved same up. Same as Portsmouth. Yeah. Well, I mean, Portsmouth are still in the same division. They've not really changed. Yeah, that's true. They did yeah. have that double drop though at one point, didn't they? I think, I think so, yeah. Plymouth had the double. I know Plymouth definitely. It, Plymouth definitely had the double drop in... 2011 they championship down to league two didn't they yeah they did i think that because they went into administration so they they were struggling you know even yeah. obviously i said well it happened to wolves it happened to sunderland i mean i i know both those two were from the premier league down to league one but it was it, it hit wolves badly it hit sunderland but it hit sunderland i think a lot worse and now obviously yeah, they're it took on them the a bit to... longer to recover sunderland Mm. Whereas Wolves that year had in 2013 14, they had Kenny Jacket at the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, nah, I mean, looking at some of these clubs, like if I look in League Two, Orient used to be a bit mismanaged because they were down in the National League at one point. Yeah, they were. They were. But, I mean, looking at some All of the way the... back up now, I think. Mm hmm. I'm looking at some other clubs. Gillingham's getting better. I can see, I yeah. can certainly see that. Um, if I'm looking at elsewhere, I think that's Stevenage definitely. 
Swindon, well, Swindon could have Swindon could have gone bust last year. That that that's yeah. possible. There was a possibility of that. Barrow is definitely a well-run club to me because they're they're definitely punching above the weight. Looking even lower, Wrexham. Mm. Oh, look at Wrexham. I think Wrexham will be Re- Wrexham will be a League Two side next year. I can assure you now. They can swap places with Cov. <laughs> yeah, maybe swap places with Hartley Paul. Yeah. Um Knox County are on the way back up as well, looking like. Mm. They're not they weren't very well run, really, I don't think. No. Um, they were mismanaged. Last five years has been a bit turbulent. I mean, it's like Luton also going back to them, they went into administration once. They were found themselves I remember they were in the conference anyway, they were in the National League. Yeah. Scunthorpe. Yeah. Bottom of the National League now. Like I remember them being like League One Club Challenger up there. Used to be one of Carl Spogie sides. So mm. Yeah, but anyway, that I think that rounds us off there. It was a a really interesting podcast as usual. Next week hopefully we're gonna get Alfie Lee and Lambert on unless he has rugby training hopefully I can see if we can get Josie on as well maybe one more guest maybe we could have four or five people on there next week but we'll just have to see about that that's it everybody for this podcast thank you very much indeed for watching we'll see you on the next episode of the Brexit Leagues next weekend bye bye